I used to think that I needed to have money in order to understand how money works. But a few months ago, I reluctantly got influenced and listened to an audiobook, The Millionaire First Lane, that had been recommended in one of Ali Abdal's videos because it really forced me to confront my own mindsets when it comes to money. And because this is a topic that is rarely spoken about socially, we often find ourselves moving through our financial lives without sufficient information and most times jumping on the trends that seem to be working, copied from people who are considered well off. And this is how many people put their money in investment vehicles they don't understand or fall into scams, things like betting because of the promise of quick money. What I've been doing over the past months is really asking the tough questions and I've noticed that being in my broke era is the best time to actually mend my financial etiquette because this is the period that shapes your relationship with money. The first thing I noticed about me is that I really do not care for money, which is actually a good thing. I am not motivated by money. I do not measure my value by money. What I care about is the kind of life I want to live, which yes, requires a lot of money to achieve. But because I'm focused on my quality of life, it means that I am more cool headed about the trajectory I want and I know to invest in the knowledge and skills I need to achieve my dream life. I prefer to take the slow road to reach my destination rather than running too fast only to fall over a cliff. This doesn't mean that I tolerate mediocre because I am someone with very expensive and particular taste and I actually inherited this from my mother but this means that I have to be extra careful and very strategic because true wealth is a long game. The second reason I've learned is that you actually don't need much to live. I work in marketing and my job is about trying to get people to buy the next product but truth is you don't need much. You don't have to buy clothes every month, you don't need an expensive 10 step skincare routine or to buy the most expensive gift for the people you care about because most times being present and being a great listener is the best gift. Unfortunately, while this is true, find that a lot of people will not think you are worthy of anything if you are not brandishing all the wares that capitalism affords you. It's why so many people go out of their way to look for get-rich-quick schemes to secure loans to buy a car or to buy a house they can't afford. I find that people are not ready to support you or to give you a time of their day if you don't already live a life they aspire to. This is true offline and also online. They start taking you seriously once you can show that you have all these things that signifies lots of money. That's why it's easy to fall into this trap of wanting to buy everything in order to signal wealth. It's a form of social proof and social capital that gains you a title of an important person and even a ticket to getting something like political support. And this is exactly why it's important to teach yourself not to listen to other people's opinions and to also not seek extrinsic validation because this is how you find yourself living beyond your means, trying to impress people that don't even care about you, but about what they can get from you. The best example of this is the fact that ever since I came back from France, no one has bothered me anymore to ask me for money because they think I am now useless to them. But the moment they see me back abroad, they're going to resurrect from their vampiric graves and they'll be the loudest to scream about how selfish and inconsiderate I am for not helping them. In addition, I'm finding myself with tough questions about how I also want to spend my money in the near future. I have been thinking about real estate and the ethics of it. I wonder how it's acceptable to create investment out of something that is a basic right for people, especially in a world where a lot of people are denied this basic right because of the greed that comes with making profits from this investment. How did this become acceptable and even normalized? I have been doing this finance course on EDX, it's called Foundations of Finance and oh my god. I don't think I've come across such a difficult course, I mean the last time I did was in school, that's like when I was doing my masters. The course was labeled that it can be done by people who are beginners when it comes to matters finance but they're using such advanced language that it really reminds me of how in the society that we live in we are really never taught anything about finances, how the financial system 
system works and this is because it's done on purpose and one of the ways in which they get to keep this information is by using this really difficult language that even the people who are financial professionals don't even know how to explain in simple terms because even if you're going to say oh you can just sit down and study about it you will start learning about one term and the second term by the time you get into the third term your brain is just so exhausted because it's just a lot i'm doing this course not because i want to become a professional in the finance field because i want to understand more about the finance industry and just become financially literate this idea that this finance industry has these difficult terms is one of the ways of keeping people out because the common person is not going to understand what is being talked about and now that i think about it i've actually had the privilege of working in companies in the financial industry both in kenya and in france so i can actually say that my knowledge is not very elementary because working around oh my god these chickens are just so annoying <laughs> Because it's one thing studying about the financial industry but nothing beats working in a company that is actively participating in this industry that is very much a game very much a game when you start working in these companies you realize that a lot of things are just lies when it comes to things like stocks and whatever it's just a game they're not real it's just made up even when i look at how people are talking about investments especially on social media you can clearly tell that there are some investments that are designed for the middle class and then there are some investments that are actually get kept for the rich and the ultra rich now, this industry is is just so interesting but at the same time you just like why does it need to exist like the reason why it exists is the reason why a lot of people a lot of governments want this upper class and lower class kind of society if we all wanted equality it would mean that there would be a collapse in these hierarchies that we've created for ourselves and equality would also mean the end of capitalism because capitalism only survives on the premise that the people that take the highest risks are the the ones that get the highest rewards and of course if you look at our school systems the people who are more probable to be the highest risk takers are people who come from the upper classes because they grow up without really caring about money without worrying about basic needs that means that they can really put all their time into doing whatever they want they can take the risks that they want they're the ones that get the highest rewards <laughs> something else that i've actually gathered from this course is the fact that the system is actually designed for the people who are already rich to win a good example is if you wanted to take a loan today and you do not have assets or things that already show how rich you are or something to show that you're good with money you are either not going to get the loan or you're going to get the loan at very high interest rates but that is the complete opposite for people who are rich because they not only easily get loans but they also get loans with very low interest rates and this is one of those things that really makes it harder for people who are in the the lower social classes to sort of move to a different social class or even become rich or wealthy because the system is already rigged against you the best example of this is that when you don't have money and you want to start a project or you want to start a business most of the time you will think of you know, how am i going to raise money for this project on my own you want to look at family members to give you money because most times the banks are not going to give you money because they consider you to be a high risk person but for the real people when they're thinking of starting a business or starting a project they don't think of using their money they just write up a proposal then they get a loan or go to an investor who gives them the money for them to really inject into their idea their project or their business and I think the best example of this is the host of the diary of the CEO what is he called Stephen Bart Bartlett. I recently watched a video of his that he did about three years ago about how he got into starting his podcast. Well, for a normal person, when they want to start a podcast, they'd be like, oh, I'm going to buy this equipment, this and this and this. And they start, you know, producing it. But what he did, he went to look for investors and they were able to actually fund his podcast this was before having these high profile names on his podcast and one of the reasons why he was actually able to get the trust of investors is because he's someone who at that time had already built successful businesses so definitely it's easy for you to convince someone to invest in you if you already have past successes which goes to show 
how harder you have to work if you have nothing you really have to build yourself in order for people to truly believe in you and bet on you and i wish this was something that was actually taught in school more because one of the things that has always been peddled in the school system is that oh if you just get the good grades then you're going to find yourself living a successful life but it doesn't work like that getting good grades and i know that someone who has always had the good grades it really doesn't matter from my own experience i've actually realized that the most important thing or skill that you need to have is storytelling take the example of the political arena people who are the most successful most times are people who are good at speaking that is part of communication and storytelling look at former president barack obama look at the current president of france emmanuel macron look at kenya's president William Ruto. These are personalities that are very good at speaking. Like they speak and you're like, yeah, I believe everything you're saying. And essentially, even when it comes to life, if you really want to win at life, you have to be good at communicating your ideas, communicating your story. To get investors, it's all about storytelling, of course, apart from showing how viable your business plan is. One of my favorite shows that really breaks this down very well is the million pound menu. And it's about restaurants that are seeking investment oh my god because i love food i love the food industry it's very eye-opening to know exactly how you can actually get investors for your restaurant business and there's just so much that goes into it it's not just having great food if you have great food but you don't know how to communicate the story of that great food it's not easy to become successful all in all taking this course i'm finding it to be fun although it's very heavy especially on my brain but i'm taking it slowly and just trying to learn as much as possible and i'm also realizing that apart from having a lot of knowledge and also being good at storytelling one of the most important skills you need is audacity you need to be someone who's really ruthless about going after what they believe in you need to be the kind of person that can come up with a plan and actually execute it no one is going to do it for you you have to be the kind of person that is just audacious and ambitious and doesn't falter when they hear no you have to keep going audacity is very important <laughs>